Hi, thanks for watching Peter's Food Adventures. We're at it again and we are smoking a turkey. So I love my smoker. I have an offset smoker and it's a char griller and we've been smoking all sorts of things and we loved smoked meats uh, and sausages. A few things you're gonna need. Uh, this is gonna be a long process and not a very cheap process if you're just getting started out. You're gonna need a few things to buy to get started. There's a few things like I have the remote food thermometer. Uh, when I'm upstairs and I've got the, the turkey already in and smoking, I don't have to worry so much to go back and check to how it's going. Uh, I just have to kind of manage the temperature. Uh, I'm not an expert on managing temperature. Mine does uh, fluctuate up and down. I think that's why people like a lot of the pellet drum because it's so easy. Um, you're going to need a separate stick thermometer. Uh, use the other one just as a guide. This one will actually tell you the whole chicken is or turkey is done. You want to poke it around, check the thigh, check the breast that it's all cooked to temperature. And uh, you might want some silicone gloves. Uh, people like wearing these in the case they have to grab it. The chickens I'm not so worried about, but when I was smoking turkeys, something bigger, I like to move it around first. So that's what that looks like. And obviously you can use cherry or apple wood. Uh, that just gives it a nice gentle flavor. Uh, stay away from something heavy like a mesquite. Uh, it's a bit overpowering and you won't taste the brining of the flavors of the birds. So, like I said, it's a long process. You've got to brine your turkey because it's gonna dry out and not be as juicy. I've got a comparison of a wet brine and a dry brine for something that I smoked. Uh, I always go for the wet brine. It's more flavorful and more juicy. It just comes out perfect and tender every time. Okay, so I've got the turkey. It has been in a brine since yesterday. And uh, <laughs> place it down. And you want to pat down the turkey dry. Some people leave it in the fridge for a few hours so it kind of air dries. It's not a bad idea. You get a nicer, crispier kind of skin if you do that. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put some oil on the uh, turkey. I'm trying to do this with one wet hand, one dry hand. <laughs> and I'm just using just the seasoning salt. Um, you don't need a lot. You can just do salt and pepper if you want. And you actually don't need, I find, to do things. But if you wanted to put Cajun or Chipotle. And flip and repeat. And I wash my hands now. Now it always looks better when you tie it up. I've just got a long piece of string. You want to tuck in the wings underneath. Surprisingly, it does stay quite good that way. My long string. I'm just tying it kind of like you tie a chicken. twice on that end. What I forgot to do before tying this all up is <laughs> shoving in some onions and some apples inside. This just gives it some uh, flavor as it cooks, some sweetness from the apples. Some people don't put anything inside and there you go. We've got our turkey brined, tied and ready to smoke. Now I always add a tray liner underneath with water. It acts twofold. The water will uh, bring some moisture to the cooking area and uh, catch on any drippings that may drop in, making it easy for you to clean up. Lots of people smoke the turkey at 250, but I usually keep it a little higher at 275-ish. As mentioned, I use cherry wood or apple wood chunks. Insert the probe thermometer, one into the breast and one into the thickest part of the thigh. Okay, now you don't want to keep opening and peeking in there. Oh, look how beautiful that is. But uh, I'm going to just turn the chicken around. It's 
some of the juices out, just so it's uh, cooking kind of evenly on both sides. Pour out some of the extra juices from the onions. Oh, that is incredible. Oh, can't wait. covered this because I didn't want to get too brown. Look how good that looks. Always use an instant read thermometer to check the temperature in several places before you take the turkey out. Well, how about the dreaded temperature stall? Yep, there's usually a temperature stall and I usually wait it out. This turkey stalled around 154 degrees. Uh, you can pop it into the oven to finish off with the right temperature. Uh, especially if you're in a crunch and you have guests waiting. Uh, if you're gonna put it in the oven, uh, cover with foil at 350 or 175 Celsius. The internal temperature of the turkey needs to be 165 Fahrenheit or 75 degrees Celsius on the breast. The legs and thighs need to be 180 Fahrenheit or 85 Celsius. I'm always very cautious when cooking the dark meat near the bone. Uh, I wanna really make sure it's at the right temperature. Although some people don't seem to be as concerned about it as I am, but I always make sure that the dark meat is cooked to temperature. It is really juicy. That's me after poking it for a while. It is super juicy, ready to eat bird. The flavor and the smell is just amazing. Fell apart here a little bit, but never mind. And that's it, the turkey is done. It is so juicy, it's dripping on the floor. Uh, all that's left is to try to taste it now. Mmm, mmm, it's so tender and juicy. Hmm. I shouldn't be filming with a full mouth, but I couldn't wait. Thank you so much for watching this recipe. The link to how to make a, the brine will be at the bottom of the YouTube channel. And as always, all my recipes are out on the website. We'll see you next time.